Hello, model railroaders. This is Burr Stewart with another live stream about uh, working on the model railroad, uh, in this case, the Burlington Northern. This is a 1973 era model of the uh, Burlington Northern Railroad in the Seattle region. Um, today, uh, uh, today, what we're going to do is finish up the job we've been doing on Interbay by fixing up the various car card boxes. Now that we've discussed using uh, car cards and waybills, so I'll flip the camera over, and you can see the area in front of Interbay Yard, and the issue at hand in today's challenge is to uh, replace this three box, um, w these three waybill boxes here with uh, a five waybill box, which I seem to have room for, though it shouldn't be too hard to do. And I'm also going to show you how I label them quickly and easily. Um, you know, everything in model railroading you can do to a very fine artistic level. But with this big layout, I like to do things as quickly as possible. So um, I will show you now the tools that we're going to use. And then we'll get to work. Here we have a couple of different saws. Uh, that we'll use to saw off the little part of the shelf here that we need to remove in order to install that larger box. We have some a white pencil with some um, templates for making the letters and numbers. And I have a drill for uh, the new screws if needed and a square drive uh, drill for uh, removing the existing box. So that's the, oh, and of course I have the boxes. Now, well, put put you back here in the, holder. Now, uh, you can make your own boxes and there are all kinds of ways to do this. I, I well, I'll show you close up here. We'll just start with talking about boxes. I made these boxes years ago out of foam core, and I thought it would be clever to have the bottoms of them. You can see there's just little strips in the bottom there um, to hold the car cards in place, but any dirt would just fall out over time. And that has worked uh, really well. The only problem I have is that it, with this is that they're not quite as wide as I sometimes need them when I have a long train come in. But uh, that's easy to make these out of foam core. Uh, if you know what foam core is, it's a re readily available and very easy to cut with a uh, X-Acto knife and a straight edge. Um, I'll just show you some other car card boxes. I made these out of uh, quarter inch plywood and uh, they, they're even thinner. But actually, that works out okay here because this, uh, these boxes are just for some industry tracks here. And you can see these industry tracks are um, not long enough to require a thick uh, car card box. So I'd rather have the aisle space than have this stick out. Uh, another time I built some car card boxes out of plexiglass that I happen to have around. and. Um, uh, th I made these a little wider. Th this is for my narrow gauge railroad, which interchanges with the standard gauge here in the Delta Yard. You can see all those cool narrow gauge engines and cars over there. Um, and so I needed to separate the narrow gauge operation from the standard gauge. So I used the gauge and then the regular um, uh, boxes for the standard gauge. So here you have the standard gauge um, delta yard main line siding. And then over here we have track two, three, four, and five. We just talked about this in the last uh, live stream where we were doing some switching here. 
of course, as a result of our switching, we actually emptied the entire yard, which is kind of odd. But that's because we haven't had an operating session for a while. Anyway, I digress. So it, it, as, as we come over here, um, here's another set of the clear plexiglass that I'm using for the narrow gauge operation. And um, they work fine. The only problem is sometimes the glue, if you don't do the glue well, it can come undone. And you see here, I put a piece of tape here to reinforce when the glue failed. Um, that's just because I'm not that good with plexiglass. So fine. Uh, and you might notice this too is a handy thing. It's a shelf that I put in with a hinge. So if we're not operating, I don't have to have that sticking out in the aisle and it's easier to walk around the room. Um, I put a little uh, cabinet magnet here. Uh, so that's nice. Now, um, I want to get back to work here. Uh, but I wanted to show you different approaches to car card boxes. And I think there are some others I may have made. But in, in recent years, uh, just out of laziness, I've tended to buy the ones from Micromark because they're relatively inexpensive and, and uh, uh, they're nice and deep. And I just like them. So they come like this with a kind of a varnish finish on them, which is fine except that I find it's too bright and distracting. So I want the car card boxes to fit in with the layout and be my dark green that I have on the fascia. You see that? And um, so step one for the car card boxes is to paint them with my, front, my fascia green. You can see I've already done this and I've actually let this set for two days so that it'll be uh, easier to put the labeling on it. And I didn't paint the back because this will all be up against the layout. That makes sense, I hope. So let me put you back in the tripod and see what kind of damage we can do to the front of the layout. I don't know why I enjoy that, but we seem to do it. So uh, the first step, I guess, is to measure uh, where we need to cut board here. Now, uh, there are quick and, and not so quick ways to do this sort of thing. Uh, and it looks to me like it doesn't really matter uh, exactly where I put this. I'm going to make a little mark here. And I'm going to, whoops, take a little square and square it up. Now, I don't have a square handy, but I can just use this, I guess, and make my mark. Maybe this will work better. Yeah, I just want to square up this edge to help me when I'm sawing. Now it's a little bit delicate here next to the edge. What I'm planning to do is take my trusty saber saw for the first bit and then stop at some point and finish it off with the fine saw. So let's see if we can get that to work. I don't know why that's so crooked. Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh well. Uh, let's see, where is the plug? That seems a little crooked to me. I don't like to operate with a crooked saw blade, but if you bend a saw blade, it it might it might break because it's kind of um, speaking of breaking. <coughs> I'm going to get my safety glasses. <coughs> There's nothing stupider than getting an eye injury <clears throat> when you're working with power tools. So I got my safety glasses on, see? 
So now I, I straightened this out a little bit and we can try this. It's not exactly precision carpentry. I just want to remove this part. Interesting. It's fun to watch the uh, cabooses jump around. Well, that was fairly brutal. Now we'll finish this off with a with a fine carpenter saw. I guess I could remove this before we saw the paper up. Whoa! Didn't mean to saw my hand. By the way, you might notice uh, I put in this little these little plastic strips here that make it easy to hold pieces of paper that are useful to cruise. And uh, we'll finish this off. All right, that was easy. Now we don't need this little piece of plastic either, but it seems like sawing up the whole edge doesn't isn't needed either. That looks like a job for an X-Acto knife, right? So let's put the saw down, grab the nearest X-Acto knife. Here we go. And uh, if you're joining me live, welcome. Uh, let's see, this is not a big deal, being a small piece of plastic. I just would like to get it out of there. Okay, now the next thing we can do is take contents out of here. Oh, that's a, you know what this is? It's one of these magnetic uncouplers that uh, has a magnet on each side and it when you put it down the track it pulls the it pulls the uh, coupler to the side uh, not too many people like them but they're for those that do it's fun to have one around and we're not quite ready getting rid of everything because we have a little Holder. Here, I'll move you over. You can see what I'm talking about. There's a little styrene holder for the uh, picks right here that we're going to need to move. And fortunately, I believe I designed these with a mounting screw. Uh-huh. I think I used a small square. So I need to find my, I might grab my other screwdriver. There's two sizes of square drive screws. And if you haven't discovered square drive screws, I recommend looking into it because they are much easier to use than regular Phillips head or slotted screws. In this case, I have a I have a uh, ratchet screwdriver that has the small and the large uh, size of square drive on it. So it's really easy to just come here and stick this in here and take out the screw. Nothing to it. I think we're going to have room to put this back on the layout after we move. Now, this is the all important piece of paper that I figured out how I wanted to label my new um, boxes, my five boxes. So we'll 
we'll be using that in a minute. But the, it looks like it looks like we're set here that we can remove this old box. I think I like your viewing angle that you had before a little better. So let's let's move you over here. Whoops. Are you with me on that? A little better angle. Uh, so we're taking out, this is the fun part. We actually make visible progress. We're gonna take this box out and you'll, you'll notice that I um, seem to have glued it. Well, not really. I painted the top um, to match the scenery. So that's a little sticky there. And you also notice that the washer that I used stuck to the car card box. You could countersink this, be perfectly good, but um, here we go. You could countersink the hole here, but in a lot of applications on the front fascia, I like to use these little, I don't remember what they call them, but they're, they're basically designed for putting um, um, wood screws into onto flat surfaces. So then I use a, a nice big washer, fender washer, I guess they call it. And then um, I, I'm securing this fascia with a flat, broad area. I don't know that that's really necessary because you can see here, I've just got some wood screws holding the fascia in. But I started this when I was uh, mounting the the uh, foam core and I didn't, I, the foam core I knew would just rip right out if I just countersunk screw holes. So that was the argument for that. Now it, it would be nice to not have that bump sticking out there. Of course, naturally fixing that requires a little bit of sandpaper, which I didn't get handy. So just give me a second. With any luck, we can get that sanded off quickly. This is all going to be behind the new It would almost be better to cut this out with our X-Acto knife if we know, knew what we did with our X-Acto knife. I've lost track of it already. Isn't this fun, keeping track of tools when you think what you're doing is working and all you're really doing is tool management? Okay, I take this X-Acto knife and just shave this off. Now, this is not necessary. I'm just being fussy. Now, we have a, another interesting issue here. So here's our new five bill box. So that's going to be fine. But look how it. we need to take that uh, screw out. Are you with me? Do I have anybody here? I know this is one of the more boring topics we could be discussing, but... What's what's interesting about this is that we've got a screw here that we could use right here in the bill in the in the way bill box, and we have another one here that's uh, securing the fascia. And we could just pull that out and put it back in with a washer. So I don't have to generate new holes or anything like that. I just have to pull this fender. Uh, this is uh, out and I also have to figure out a way to mark this so that it will um, uh, be in the right place. Now, I've never, yeah, I could measure it. I could measure it, but what I tend to do instead, what happened to my white pencil, is to just eyeball it. Oh, how could I lose my white pencil? 
That's so annoying. Not under this, is it? Well, we can't very well. Oh, there, it's on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just eyeball it. And if I look around here and hold this close, look off to the side, to the front, and just make a little dot there. I can eyeball that that's where we want that. And then we can come over here and do the exact same thing. If you look from the top and the side, you can kind of zero in on where it needs to be. I know this is not exactly precision, but with any luck, this will turn out well enough. And of course, there's a big advantage of using a white a white pencil because we have it's very easy to see the mark on the dark paint. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and drill. Let's go down to the floor and we'll just go ahead and drill those two holes. Won't take any time. Why is it so dark down here? You know why? Because I didn't turn on the Lego Town lights. There we go. That's better. I think you can see me. So I've got my little mark here. That looks like to me like it's a dull bit. Not really that far down. Yeah. Boy, you can really, you can scare yourself sometimes. Would have been better, would have been better to drill those from the back so as not make a mess on this nice new paint. But like I said, I like to do things in, well, I don't like to do things in a hurry. I just end up doing it that way. And here's our, we come back up to our main theater. Hope that didn't make you seasick. And sand the back. Again, we don't want to have any unnecessary protrusions. I think I pretty much like everything about this. Now this, notice how that white stuff was was glue or something. So came out really well. All right, now the only thing, there's only two things standing in our way. But the first thing, let's do first things first, is to get rid of this. And hopefully the whole fascia won't come apart when I do that. But that's good. Were you able to see that all right? I guess you could be a little, I could zoom you in. Be nice if I get the vacuum cleaner, get rid of that sawdust too, wouldn't it? It's kind of annoying. All right, so uh, we want to pick this away. Oh, that was easy. All right, so there's another. Um, use for an exacto knife. I mean, I could sand this too if I had just the right sander. One thing I love about this particular type of uh, project is that we're hiding all of this behind the car card boxes, so we don't care about messing up the paint in this spot. Sometimes you end up wasting a bunch of time trying to protect the paint finish, but in this case, we're just cranking it out. Okay. Now we're going back in that hole with the, with the new board. Let me just take the sand. What, what happened to the sanding block? All I'm doing today is losing tools. But I, I guess, you know, model railroading is fun. That's the theory. So we, want, we don't want to get too frustrated when these things happen, even though I tend to get too frustrated. Okay, so. We're happy with that, except for this one issue of the annoying sawdust. No, 
it makes very little sense to fix that until we're done with other drilling that we might need to do. Uh, so, wait a minute. Here's the other screw. Now, you notice that now that could be a problem. And there we go. This screw was probably put in here 20, 25 years ago. And so it's been painted a couple of different times. And so the paint got in the hole um, in the square drive, which made me have to push on that pretty hard. But um, anyway, the good news is that the whole fascia didn't come apart. So now we can, we're in a position to just take our screws and screw them in. There's only one trouble. I can see already that this is not the right position. That's unfortunate. Now we may be able to fix it. I didn't quite mark that right. I don't know why, but we'll do it again. Do it right the second time. That one over on the right side looks perfect. This one, not so good. Although we maybe, well, maybe we'll just try and see what happens. But before we do that, wouldn't it be clever to do the labeling on this, on these boxes first before installing it? Now that's a question. Because if, if I put it up here, then I have to reach down with my pencil and do all this. Whereas if we, if we do the labeling now, we can just sit down, put it on our, put it in our lap, just sit down and, uh, and do the job. All I have to do is set up some kind of a view so that you can see it. Let's see, what makes sense to do here? Apologize for the mess, but it's the real world here. We're just trying to build a train layout. And it's about time we did it because I've been working on the darn thing for 35 years. <laughs> okay, so can you see that pretty well from there? Uh, you should be able to. So we got to get our trusty, this is the all important sticky that I used to tell me how I wanted to label it. And we need our white pencil and our template. This is the template. Now this is gonna be pretty painless because there's so few things to label. So what we're gonna do here is just put, like I said, you could make much fancier labels than this, but this just, this just gets the job done quickly. So the left box, we want the drill track. But as I think about this, as I go on, uh, across here and I'm right-handed, I'm gonna be messing up the labeling with my left hand. So let's work from right to left. The right-hand track is track number four uh, in the engine terminal. And this whole thing is the engine terminal. So I think it probably makes sense for me to start by putting the engine terminal label across. And if I say engine terminal without saying interbay, that seems wrong. So I think we should say interbay engine terminal. So we'll put the in, the in, the word engine will be right in the middle. I'm going to just kind of eyeball this as far as the position. Huh. Now there is an interesting idea. I never thought of that, but I think it's an excellent idea. If I took a couple of clamps And I took another, oh, these clamps aren't gonna be big enough, are they? Wouldn't that be cool if I could set this up as a, um, yeah, yeah, see what I'm talking about? If I set a straight edge here, we can make this go twice as fast. I can just put the, uh, Now, I know some of you are just cringing because I, I should be measuring all this. 
to get it just right. And I apologize. No, that's that clamp isn't quite big enough, is it? Maybe. Maybe it is. You following me all right there? Other than how ridiculously sloppy I'm being. All right, that's just really, it's so half assed with it. All right, just a minute. Let me get a bigger clamp. We'll be right back. Oh, what kind of clamp do we want to use? Um, for that matter, since I got this far off, might as well measure it. And that will make some of you happy. I know it'll make me happy. Remember I said this was saving us time. Now, the, the question is, could we have just gotten it all done already if I hadn't wasted all this time getting a clamp? Okay, so now we're going to measure. You see everything all right there? We're going to measure this. It looks like five, I mean seven-eighths of an inch, but it's a little bit high there, so let's bring it in, release that, bring it up slightly, and make it the same as this. All right, now it's the same as that. All right, so now we have, we now have a guide. The only trouble is that we're, we're gonna run into problems banging into the guide, but all right, whatever. All right, let's just try it, see what happens. So we want engine in the middle. You see this good? Engine in the middle, so E-N-G-I-N-E. I-N-E-E-N-G. I and E. So that means the I uh, would be right near the very center of that box if we're going to center this. So there's the I. Uh, so what did I say? E and G. So we want the G there. E and G. And then we want the E right next. No, no. E and G. Boy, this takes some concentration, doesn't it? So this, here's where it's nice that that's a flexible template. E-N-G. One thing you can say at the end of this live stream is you'll you'll know how to spell the word engine. E-N-G. There's the E. E-N-G. I-N-E. That's how you spell engine. As far as I know, engine, E N G I N E. Is that right? Engine, gin E. All right. Did we get it done? Now, this is way faster. When I've done this in the past, I had to align it every time. When you have a straight edge like this, it makes it so much better. Okay, engine. Now we have terminal. To the right of that, we'll leave a little space between the words. T. This really is a terminal because a lot of engines uh, come off their trains here and get serviced, which is why we're spending all this effort on building the sand towers. And T E R. Who knew that a YouTube video would be a spelling lesson? Who knew? T-E-R-M. Where's our M? There it is. M. I. N. A. L. Now, you know, like I said, you could make a much nicer looking sign than this. 
for your car card box. But I'm I'm thinking that looks professional, quote, you know, professional enough that, I, you know, at least people know what the darn car box is for. Okay, and now we need interbay. This is a little harder because we have to go backwards. B-A-Y. Interbay. B-A-Y. Now, there's going to be some of you that know that by 1973, to honor... Um, the past president Balmer, they named it the Balmer engine terminal. I mean, Balmer yard, but anyway, there we go, interbay. Um, but, so the question is, why don't I call it the Balmer engine terminal? Well. I don't, I don't know. I, I think what what I finally decided, because people get confused, like the railroaders, the hardcore rail, uh, BN rail fans know that the inter, that the Seattle Interbay Yard was called Balmer by 1973. I-N-T-E-R, we need an R there. And um, that that's prototypical to call it Balmer. But a lot of the people that come here to operate may not be experts on the BN, and they may have heard of the Interbay neighborhood in between Queen Anne and Magnolia in Seattle. I N T E R. I'm going to be really annoyed if we, we misspell this when I'm talking to you and working at the same time. Okay, I N T E R. We need a T. So far, so good. I haven't been looking to see if any of you are making comments to say, no, no, I-N-T-E-R-B-A-Y. So we only got two letters to go here, N, N, and I. You can always steal an I off the adjacent letter many times. Okay, there we go, Interbay Engine Terminal. Cool, right? Get rid of this darn thing. I think we can do the rest of it by eye. We're almost done labeling this. What did we do with our, oh, there it is. Huh. Lost that in there. So we're, we're doing track four over here. And I'm just going to put a four here. And I'm going to use the top. Now, before I go on, I'm just going to check and see if, if uh, you have any questions. Um, not so far. Okay, good. It looks like you're seeing me all right. I sure hope so. There's no way for me to tell if you're getting the right angle or not. All right, so we're putting track four. And what I usually do is put my fingers in the in the bin like this and then um, center the number and uh, in between my two fingers try to get it reasonably close to the right place so that's track four And this is track three here. Try to get it about the same as the other one. See, this is a lot easier sitting down than if we had mounted this to the layout already. Track two. I know it's a little tedious to watch, but you can always speed up the speed. And track one is going to be right here, lined up with these others. And then this left-hand track is the drill track um, for for the inner bay yard. And 
that's a little confusing is if a person doesn't know what drill means. And I think what I'm going to just do is put drill here and then just explain it to people for right now. I can always come back and modify this one. D-R-I-L-L. -L. So I is right in the center of this and um, line it up there. I, and then we can do two L's. And we got our drill track labeled. D R I I learned the hard way that you really need to let the paint dry for a couple of days. Cause I don't know why I just lost your the connection there, but I did. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're now we're going to install our bin on here and see if we have to redrill that hole. You can't really see this, but I think I put this hole a little bit too far to the right. But time will tell. Um, our, we've got our screwdriver and we can start with this one over here. And we'll just stick this in here. Go through this hole. Whoops. Now this should be a it should be a clearance hole, but it, it's not really. But it, it'll become one when I drill it around a bit. So this goes in here. And this goes in here. Now, the question still remains. Now, remember I had a, a long screw here, but, oh yeah, maybe that's a good idea. So I'm putting the screw farther out than it was by quite a bit. So this is probably the right size hole to use. I mean, the right size uh, screw to use. Let me just start this and see if I can get it to, get it to go in. might be able to. Yeah. Yeah, it's going in okay. I was a little nervous. How about that? How about that? We got two screws in. This is rock solid. I dinged the paint a little bit with my drill because I didn't drill it from the back, but I can live with that. You can always patch it up later. Now, this is the moment you've been waiting for, for me to get rid of that annoying sawdust. So let's plug that in and get rid of that sawdust right now. Now I could have blown it. Very nice. It's really firm up against that board, which gives it a little bit of stability as well. I didn't have before. Very nice. Okay, so now we have brand new uh, car card boxes and we can put this in engine track one. And this is two and this is three and these our engines are on four. And if you look up on the layout and you were here in person, you would see that the engines over back there in the engine terminal those engines that back there are all on the corresponding tracks to the car card boxes those are the those are the engine cards so it'll be easy easier for the hostler to keep track of what's going on no pun intended now 
this adjustment also, or the, the new, the new uh, construction that we've been doing the last few weeks, added uh, two tracks that we didn't have. The, and, and if you haven't been paying attention, which I don't know why you would be, here's an overview of the yard. And uh, yeah, look at all that BN power. I'm telling you, modeling 1973 is a blast. There are all these different color paint schemes and renumbering the old locomotives and the, the new green locomotives. Yeah, this never quits. So, um, what was I showing you? Oh, so we added two tracks. We added this track for the maintenance of way and car shop supplies. And we added this track here for the sanding, uh, for the sand to go uh, into the system for the um, sanding towers, which aren't up yet, but we'll eventually have these really cool sanding towers up here. So I need car, uh, car card boxes for these two things. So I decided to make, uh, and, and I won't go into how hard it is to figure out what's the right order to label each car card box, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the sand track here and the maintenance of way and car supplies here. Now, I know, no, I'm not sure what to call this maintenance of way car supplies, but actually that's not the worst name, M-O-W slash car supplies. That's really not the worst name. So let's get our pencil in our template and something I can sit on so I don't go crazy. Although I don't, I don't, I don't know if the chair is the right height. That might be. All right, it, this might be all right. Can you see this? You see the labeling on the boxes? No, not too well. Okay, let's come down. Come down some more. All right. I'll put it like that so you can admire the layout while I'm doing this little tiny job. So we're decided to call this MOW slash uh, car supplies. So for that to work, in the middle would be the slash. So where do we find a slash? Oh, the V would give us a slash. So right in the middle, up at some decent height, we want to put that slash. There's our slash. Is that about in the middle? Yeah, good enough. M-O-W, so we'll put the W. Oh, I just accidentally rubbed white. Uh, pay attention. Okay, M-O-W. I don't know how many people know that that means maintenance of way, but hopefully enough people that this will work out. M-O-W slash. Now you have to be a little careful with that many letters to scrunch them up a little bit so they'll fit. Especially when you have three letters like M-O and W that are all pretty wide. So I'm not going to uh, use my um, previous generous spacing here. I'm going to M-O-W, I'm going to sort of scrunch them in a little bit so that, you, that you'll be able to fit M-O-W within the, see that's still within the edge of the car card box, M-O-W slash car C. Now, you know, doing this without any guide on there, is a little risky, but it, it's it's good enough. Let's not get too carried away here. MOW slash car, which kind of doesn't make any sense unless you have the word supplies there. Okay, cool. MOW slash car. Now we need supplies. 
S U P P L I E S S U P P E. So we can put the P in the middle, just slightly to the left. I'm gonna put it uh, put it in the middle here. I'll tell you why in a second. S U Boy, I'm sorry about dropping out like that. I'm going to have to do something about the Wi-Fi coverage in this house. You see me all right? So we got one more to do here. And this one we're calling Sand Track. Now, is Sand Track the right thing to call it? Sand or engine supplies. That's M O W car supplies. And I don't want to say sand, etc. That sounds ridiculous. Um, sand or uh, sand unloading. How about if I just call it sand for now? And everyone will know because they'll be really amazed at those sand towers when we get them built. Let's just call it sand. There, that'll be unambiguous. All right, sand. We'll just put this right here. A. Now, see, I started with the A because I wanted to get it close to the center of the box. Now I can put the S in front of it. Such a short word. I don't have to scrunch the letters so much. All right. S-A-N-D. We're almost done with today's spelling lesson. S-A-N-D. And... We have our D. Very nice. All right. So in our sand bin, I don't know what this is. Where are these? Oh, this is the fuel rack. These are the cars in the, over in the fuel rack. 165 is in the MOW car supplies. So that's cool. And then the sand car uh, is this one. So we can put that there. So now we have the now this gone this uh, tank car. Oh yeah, these are the tank cars, or at least three of the tank cars that are over there. I'm missing one of them. We'll find those later. All right, so that's today's live stream. Thanks for joining me. I uh, I wanted to show you that that uh, once you're done with the modeling of a project, the actual construction, you got to take care of some of the operational infrastructure, which in this case, not to use fancy words, um, all I really mean is if we add two tracks here, we have to add two bins. And in order to add the bins, I had to rearrange where different things were. Oh, yeah, there's one more. I, 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 I wanted to re-letter this, but I think you've gotten the idea. I'm not going to bore you with more of this lettering. But you see, I have um, uh, I've shifted this over. I put the drill track. Uh, I put the drill track over here so that uh, I could add um the the ready the ready track there with the crane and the snow plows if we need snow plows in winter that's the spot near the car repair shed where they tended to hold that stuff until it was called out in an emergency so um with that let's call it a day i thank you all for joining me with this live stream and uh, we'll be many more in the future as we continue to make progress on the Burlington Northern Railroad set in 1973 in Seattle. So um, I, in the meantime, uh, enjoy Model Railroad Month. 
get lots of work done on your train layout, either imaginary or real. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.